Advent mode. Today we celebrate the 24th Sunday in ordinary time. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Hay. Let us invoke our Mother Mary to accompany us in this liturgical celebration as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Please stand.
In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to this Eucharist celebration. Now let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to you, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have felt to do, through my fault, through my thought, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may fear the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Word. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
so far as he put our transgressions from us. A reading from this letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both, the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to honor the Holy Gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. I have loved you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him. Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owe him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused instead. He had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me too. So you have so you not have had pity on your fellow servants, as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. 
so will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. Uh, last Sunday, in the Gospel, Jesus taught his disciples the way of fraternal collection and how to deal with cases or arguments among ourselves, among our Christians, and how to mend a damaged relationship between friends and relatives. As we experienced that most of us, or even each of us, has left scars uh, on others or to others. Because we are human beings, we will commit mistakes, or we have done something wrong. Some were inflicted uh, on family, friends, or community. I think most of the people would hurt others or by others uh, with our words or with the words of others or deeds as well. Whether intention or unintention. Sometimes our words and deeds inflict wound for life. So how to cure the wound in today's gospel, Jesus offered us the only medicine for the forgiveness, uh, for the for cure the, the wounds, uh, is the forgiveness. That is the main topic in today's gospel and the readings. In the first reading, Sirach, it says, "Forgive your neighbors in justice." Then, when you pray your own sins will be forgiven. As we pray in the Lord's Prayer, we ask God to forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So first, we must ask God's forgiveness. Then, we must forgive others. If we do not forgive, we lock ourselves in an asylum. We are the patient, the sick person, because the sickness is hatred. Forgiveness in this context is a miracle drugs medicine. We are the prisoners who was bound in a jail of hatred. And the only key to unlock the bond is forgiveness. Otherwise, we will be suffered much, both physically and spiritually, as long as we show our forgiveness from our bottom heart. As Jesus said in today's Gospel. In the Gospel, in the beginning, the beloved disciple or apostle, Peter, as we know, Peter is the representative of the other apostles and all the followers of Jesus. He posed the question of forgiveness. And he also characteristically offered an answer. He questioned by himself, an answer by himself. He thought Jesus may praise him oh, seven times. He thought Jesus would be pleased with his answer. However, the answer from Jesus is, I say to you, 
not seven times, but as many as seventy-seven times. How unthinkable for Jesus to counter with a proposition that one must forgive seventy times that a day. The important is, in the words of Jesus, it's not about the number. Do not count the number seventy-seven times. Jesus was using this number to say that the amount of times we would forgive is far greater than we could imagine. Jesus makes it clear. That there is no limit to forgive, repeatedly to forgive, and always forgive, as we received the forgiveness countlessly, unlimitedly, from the, our beloved God. Jesus then illustrates. The mercy of God with the parable about two very different kinds of debt. The first man owned a numerous sum of money, millions are in now in our current current currency. The man who was forgiven such an incredible debt could not, however. Bring himself to forgive his neighbor, who owns him a very small amount. The first servant refused mercy to the second. Then, the result is he lost the mercy that he had been offered to him by the master. It is obviously that the parable is comparing what God has forgiven each of us with those who owe us so much less than we owe to God. As Jesus said in the Gospel, "Be merciful, as your Father's mercy is merciful." Be perfect, as your Father is perfect. This is an expectation by God to us. God ex- expect us that we are, we shall be perfect as He is perfect. Maybe we cannot reach that point. Perfect as God is perfect. Like all the parents expect, all their children should get one hundred、uh, when they have the exam. But in reality, it's not all the student can get one hundred. But all the parents expect their children get one hundred perfect. Jesus was sent by his heavenly Father. Not to condemn us, but to forgive us. If condemnation is not God's style, it should not to us either. So the good example of Jesus showed us when he was crucified on the cross. His own people. Get furious, shouted at him, crucified him, but his tears prayed for them. God, forgive them, because they do not know what they are doing. God created us, we human being. God created us through His only begotten Son. Out of love, but we human being 
crucified his only begotten son. But God still loved us by his death on the cross. So this is a good example for all of us to show our mercy and forgiveness to others. Maybe you know a, a short video uh, from Korea. A few years ago, I watched that mo- uh, video. It's a, a boy, a small boy, uh, when I'm around five or six years old. His father drive him to, to have a good day uh, in the evening, come back, and had a car accident, and his father died. And then the other party ran away. So he had this great, I mean, hatred. How come the other party killed my father and ran away? So after many, many years later, this small boy became a priest, became a father. And one day, the other party come to confess in the confession box and tell his sins that on that day, uh, he killed somebody and ran away. And the, the priest asked, is that the, the same day? Oh, yes. And finally found out this is the one. How can I forgive you? I was looking for you for 30 years. And finally you come before your death. You confess. At that time, it's very difficult for him to forgive this man who ran away when he was young. Yes, it's very hard for us to forgive those who hurt us, those who betrayed us. We loved them so much and they betrayed us. It's very difficult. That maybe that is a movie, it's a, a drama, but in reality, we also, for example, John Paul II, St. John Paul II, on May 13, 1981, he was shot twice, two bullets, by a man who entered the Vatican City. Because on that day, it's a big celebration, but he almost died, John Paul II, but he was saved. And finally, he went to visit him and forgive him and ask the others to pray for my brother. He said, this is my brother. And this one was converted to Catholic. He was not, he was may, maybe, I don't know, uh, his name is Matt. Uh, so this is real, true story for us to learn to forgive. Yes, sometimes people will say, I cannot forgive and forget. I can never forget what he or she did to me or to my family. Forgetting may not be possible. That is why forgetting is not part of the gospel requirement. But forgiveness is. Jesus demands us to forgive. He didn't request us to forget because it's impossible for us to forget because our mind is not easy to forget. Like, it's not like a cell phone or like to format and nothing remains. No, our mind is not like that. That's why Jesus do not ask to forget, but forgive. Forgive is once for all. So sometimes we are not confused by this forget and forgot. Uh, forgive and forget. We forgive, but these things still in our mind. It not means that we didn't forgive. We forgive already, but this still sometimes bothering us. So today, let us pray for the grace to forgive and make ourselves to move on in the future life. As Jesus has forgiven us in the, on the cross, and he has himself moved on to the new life and shared 
with his new life with us. May God be praised. Amen. In the name of Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Please stand for the profession of faith. I believe one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, remembering that our Lord is kind and merciful, we now present our petitions to Him with faith and trust. We pray after every petition, Loving Father, hear us. Loving Father, hear us. May all those entrusted with authority in the church and in society persevere in promoting peace and reconciliation at all times. We pray. Loving Father, hear us. May all the suffering people because of war, violence, and disasters, especially in Ukraine, Morocco, and Libya, receive the assistance they need. We pray. Loving Father, hear us. May communities and families in conflict be reconciled and may forgiveness heal and rebuild their broken relationships. We pray. Loving Father, hear us. May all of us here present learn to live as children of our all-forgiving Father and may our hearts and homes be havens of peace. We pray. Loving Father, hear us. Let us now pray for the urgent concerns of our community, especially for the ongoing renovation of our parish church and for our, for our personal intentions. We pray. Loving Father, hear us. Heavenly Father, help us remember that none of us live only for ourselves and that whether we live or die, we belong to you. Teach us to be merciful as you are merciful. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servant's offerings that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and the saints, we too give you thanks as in exhortation we acclaim. Please remain standing. You are indeed the Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew for, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At this time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took blood and gave you thanks, broke it, and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took his chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, our God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Please remain standing. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, should enter under my roof, under my roof but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall, shall be healed.
Spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I decide to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. For the Christ, 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 for the Christ. For the Christ, 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 for the Christ,
his stand. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for some parish announcements. Our announcements for today, we begin with uh, registration for the Sunday school. So if you still know of anybody who would like to join our Sunday school, four years old and above, you can register through our website, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, or you can ask for the paper form in the parish church uh, in OLMC. Secondly, our Tuesday formation for the Filipino group. So as usual, po, uh, Tuesday nights, 9 p.m., you can go to facebook.com, CFM Hong Kong, for the topics to help our spiritual life. And then thirdly, for the uh, Migrants Day in October 2, there is the celebration in the afternoon in Christ the King Parish in Causeway Bay. For lalo na po dun sa mga nagtatrabaho, mga OFWs here, we're celebrating Migrants Day October 2 afternoon. That is a statutory holiday, Monday. No? If you have time, please join us. But in the morning of that day, we are also having the movie. This is still October 2. Ang movie is Still Human. And this is also a very interesting one because it talks of the local setting of the uh, helpers and the employers. No? It's part of our fundraising actually, but we don't ask for much. It's just really more for to let you participate in the renovation of our parish church. You know that we are having only a temporary celebration here. Our celebration also is in the church, pero it's being uh, renovated this time. So we're, we're inviting you. If you have nowhere to go, October to Monday, statutory holiday, join us, uh, 10 to 12.30, and watch a movie with us, and learn also about your work and the setting. No, of course, aside from your experience, you know better. <laughs> but then it's also, to good, it's also good to reflect on our experience. No? So if you're interested, please, there is a registration form at the back. Just give your name and your uh, telephone number so we contact you because we also want to offer some uh, refreshment. That's why we need numbers, okay? So please feel free to join us. And then now we have the renovation update for the church. Let's listen. Hi, everyone. I am Benny. It is my pleasure to bring you the latest update on the progress of our renovation works. First, completion of Phase 1 of FCU upgrade. That is great news. The completion of Phase 1 of the fan car unit is an important milestone in improving the comfort and functionality of the church lobby. Replacing 17 out of 26 fan car units and installing remote LCD temperature control units will allow for better control of localized temperature and fan speed, enhancing the comfort of the church users. With phase 1 completed, the focus will now shift to phase 2, which involves replacing the fan car unit around the front area of the outer in the church lobby. This step will further contribute to maintaining a consistent and comfortable environment in that area. Second, entrance sidewall touch-up, plastering and repaint. Good progress has been made on the touch-up work of the entrance sidewall. Completing 60% of the preparation work for plastering and repaint is a significant accomplishment. A temporary scaffolding has been set up to provide a safe working platform for the task. This ensures the safety of the workers during the plastering and painting process. Moreover, the team's proactive approach in checking, examining, and fixing any loose portion of the wall is essential to ensure a durable and high-quality finish. Additionally, disassembling the false ceiling to conduct a structural inspection of the structural frame demonstrates a commitment to the overall integrity and safety of the space. To conclude, the renovation works are being carried out meticulously 
and with attention to detail. We appreciate the update on the progress made so far. We kindly ask for your continued support. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am Bernard. We still have around 50 days towards the completion of our renovation project. We need to pray for wisdom and courage, and let God guide us through this project. We have raised about Hong Kong dollar 1.47 million in the last two weeks. Making our accumulated donations to Hong Kong dollar six point four million, including two hundred and twenty thousand dollars received in the first week of the bench's renovation campaign. Once again, thank you for your kind support and prayers. Hope we can work closely together and make our effort as a good witness to God's love and mercy. May God's blessing be with you and your families always. Thank you. Thank you. Additional po. <laughs> Those who do not know about the benches, we are still having a separate. For the benches are the the pews that we use for the church. If you want to uh, donate for that one, you can group together. It's like a crowdfunding. No, katulad uh, our group here, our choir group. They are donating whatever they can, how much they can, and then when we reach the amount of eight thousand, you can choose. A name of a saint that you want, no? We put the names of the saint on the pews, no? Or also a text of the scripture that you, your favorite scripture passage, no? That will also be printed and that will be put on the pew. So when you enter in the new renewed church, it's like you are covered by the saints' protection, no? Your favorite saints, and also. A time to reflect on the scriptural passage. So uh, there is a form for that, a special form. You can also ask from the church, or you can go to our website. Thank you, Father. Your blessing, please. Please stand. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. Be merciful. Thanks be to God.